All right, five ways to think about fractions. Are you ready? Yeah. Watch this. This is called high tech. Uh. How's that? Can you see this now? Is this okay, Bill? All right. Way number one, you ready? Part whole. Let's go on to another way, ratio. Now, a ratio is a part-to-part -part way to look at things. Instead of part-to-whole, it's a part-to-a-part, -part. okay? Now, here's one. See if that makes any sense at all. Three people to seven cars. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But that's a type of ratio. So, for example, we could take a... Um, we could, um, take a survey and, and figure out how many people there are in a room and how many cars are outside. Maybe some people took buses or mass transit or whatever. So there's, there, could, there could be more cars than people in a room. But the, the ratio idea is there's some part, number of people, and then there's some other part, like a number of cars. Or Lorenzo shared a nice ratio this morning with us. Ratio, Lorenzo, is this, is this correct? You paid $7 for a half pound of coffee. Is that correct? $7 per half pound. Yeah. Per half, it wasn't per pound. It was a half pound, yeah. I think you said. Yeah. OK. Do you agree that that's a ratio? Yeah. Now, notice it's kind of, it sounds more like, it's sort of like a ratio, but it's also, it's a rate. It's a rate. He paid a certain amount for some amount of coffee. So notice that when we start talking about ratios, we could start thinking about it as a rate. You know, I pay $3 for one hour of parking. Notice it's, it's two things we're thinking about, like some money we're paying for something, and that's a rate. So a lot of times ratios we translate into rates as well. So I just want to make a note of that. Sometimes we use ratios to create a rate. Rates are something that we use a lot in math, right? Cost. Usually it's a cost of something for, you know, uh, like I said, $3 for an hour of parking. Now, notice with ratios, oftentimes we write it with a colon between the two numbers. But here's a, a, a neat thing, too. We can write it as a, as a colon like that. But oftentimes we'll also write it as in this way. And we saw that with the part whole also, okay? What do we usually call this when we see, see something like that? A number over a number. What do we call that usually? Fraction. So notice here with part whole, I also used fraction notation, okay? Let's come back to the example we had here now, okay? Can anybody translate this picture now into a ratio. So instead of being part to whole, let's do part to part. Okay, two to five. Tell me what the two is and tell me what the five is. All right, two to five where we're talking two, what is it? Shade it, you said? Two, five, unshade it? Can everybody see that? Did I write it big enough? Is that good enough? So here we can see a ratio as well. Notice the way you guys did that, part to a part, two to five. You have an image for two-sevenths now, don't you? You have an image for five-sevenths. You have an image for a ratio of two to five because of the math model. See, math models are fun. They're nice. You can see it. It helps you, and it's the same for your kids. You can have kids draw them every day, and they should be making models. So here's one of the things we should do. Let's make a model right now. Everybody in your group, you can do it alone or in your group of a part-whole relationship. You make up your own with a model and make a ratio, a part-to-part -part model on your own, and then share them with your group. How about everybody does it alone and then just share it with your group? I'm going to give you just like two minutes. So everybody makes part-whole. And a part to part Everybody, what you did, Casey? Here is what I did. I took my paper and I divided it into eighths. First of all, I made a slit right down the, the top here. So that what I could do is I could illustrate the whole as eight eighths. Or I could fold it over and I could illustrate that that's six eighths. Just like 
and that's cool. Or I could pull it over and I could illustrate that that's four eighths, so on and so forth. Three eighths, yeah. I could also do four eighths, which is also the same as half. Mm -hmm. What kind of model? It, yeah, give them a hand first of all. They're all like, wow. Or I could rip it in half and I can go part to part. Part to part. So. Before you sit down, though, um, yeah, hold that up for a minute more, because that, that's you got a lot going on there. What kind of model is that, first of all? It's a physical model. Anybody else have any other description for it? There's multiple descriptions. The one I'm thinking about is an area model. <laughs> the, he started with one whole page, right? So, yeah, what's the hole he started with? What's the original hole? Eight eighths or one piece of paper, which he divided into eight pieces. And there's eight eighths, like you said, eight parts. So the hole, he, he started with one hole. Notice that for this to make sense, we had to understand that the hole was the piece of paper. But this is an area model. He's saying each little piece is one eighth of the whole. It's area, right? Any other comments or things that jump to mind? Yes, ma'am. I think like um, also on halves, I think kids are used to seeing it this way. So if we show that this way, it, it doesn't first. look the same, but it can right. a half. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So different. Show that again, the, like a horizontal half. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Like to flip it like that. Because it looks narrow, it looks skinnier than the bigger piece. So they may not see that it actually That's a great point. That's good. An area also, as like we were saying, four, four pieces out of the four. Four pieces, say that one more time. Four pieces out of the eight. Four pieces out of the eight. So when we're thinking about area, two pieces making four, four plus four would be eight for area. Oh, I see what you're saying. This would still be eight. This would still be eight. This would still be eight. So four and one, four and another. So when we're putting things together, it'd still be eight. I like that too. When should we be helping kids to see ratios in, you know, around them? When should we start teaching about ratios? Do you think? Kinder. We can start to see ratios early on, but by the Common Core, it's second grade at the very latest. But absolutely, so we can start. With young children, start looking for part-whole relationships, ratio relationships, or part-part, all the time. The most natural being girls to boys. How many girls are in the class today? How many boys are here? Three. 